So it's now time to deploy our application to the internet so that we can share it with our friends, family and also our potential uh, employers so that we can impress them with our next year's project. Okay. So this is one final step where we uh, take this application live on the internet so that anybody in the world can access it. Okay. Rather than just running it locally. So the deployment process in next year's is fairly simple than compared to the merge stack application that we did in our previous course right since we have just one uh, particular folder uh, nothing like front end and back end so everything uh, itself is contained here and we just need to build our application and then uh, push it to a, a cloud provider like uh, we are using Vercel by the way and we just need to push our code to github and then uh, give access to Vercel to pull our code and uh, show the latest changes okay so let's get started so there is one challenge that we are facing when it comes to deployment that is the database right so we are currently using mysql database and we are running it locally within our system okay so if we want to deploy it we just need to uh, use a, a cloud provider like aws rds okay so that is uh, you know we just need to pay for that so we i'm going to also show you another alternative where we can deploy our database for free okay so unlike mongodb where uh, we have uh, already a cluster that is uh, hosted on the mongodb website and using a connection string then we operate that locally within our uh, system right so that is hosted remotely whereas mysql doesn't have any kind of uh, remote hosting platform uh, so we just need to run it uh, completely lo uh, locally and we used to communicate that uh, through mysql using the uh, sql command or the prisma right and also we have a, a graphical user interface like uh, mysql workbench right so so far we have been uh, working with that so now let's see how can we deploy our database to the cloud so that we can have access uh, for versal as well for the database by using the st uh, connection string that, that is provided by that service okay so this is a platform where we can deploy our database that is ivan okay so this is a free and open source platform where we can uh, deploy our database okay so not for free okay so so we can just deploy one database per account that uh, that we use okay so that is for free uh, if you want to use more we have to pay for that okay so let's click on get started for free so you just need to sign up with your google account or uh, any of your email id so after doing that you will be logged in so let me just go do that so once you are logged in it will ask you some few questions how do you want to use this plan so we can just click on personal and you can just provide some of your information your name uh, just give a name of your project so we can say easy homes okay so youtube just for my reference and country and we can just click on done okay so let's uh, wait for it so these are all the services that ivan actually provides us okay so we are now interested in deploying our database right that is mysql so you can just click on mysql that is over here so that is a service and we are currently interested in the free plan okay so of course if you are building a real world project we would not stick to free plan because that has its own limitations and uh, since for learning purposes we are okay with the free one and we can just select a cloud cloud provider either aws or previously i, I saw digital ocean but i don't know why it's not showing now so after doing that you can just uh, select your region okay wherever your uh, uh, which is the closest region to you and so select a service plan by default it will all be selected so you can just uh, click on create free service and this is going to give you a service uri okay so this is basically like your connection string where we can use it within our project okay so this has a, a secret key or will be secret uh, otherwise uh, anyone can access your database which is uh, hosted on this particular platform so you can just copy this and go to your dot env file and over there you can just replace your uh, currently uh, or you can just comment it out if you want to go back to your previous one and then paste in this uh, particular connection string for your mysql okay so let us go do just that so once you have done that we just need to migrate our database okay so since this is an empty database without any uh, tables and schemas so we just need to run the migration command of prisma okay so let us open our terminal and we can just type in the following command that is npx prisma and then uh, migrate and then dev okay so once you click enter so it says can't reach your database server okay so we just need to make sure that this is running so if i go back and just check if it is actually running so it has not yet uh, been deployed or uh, hosted this particular instance of mysql to avian so let's uh, wait for it and unless the status gets completed 
So it took about five minutes for this MySQL instance to get set up on Ivan. So now that this is running, we can now go back and run the same command again. Okay, so let's wait for it. So it gives me an error here saying that this migration failed to apply. So maybe because uh, the same migrations that were existing before while we were running the locally uh, set up uh, MySQL database instance. So we just need to delete that and we can uh, you know start fresh again. Okay, so I'm just going to delete this migrations folder and this will auto create once we run this command again. Okay, so let's uh, do that again and uh, let's uh, wait for it. Let's give this a name called init and hopefully it works uh, still gives me an error again still the same error so i just try to uh, you know find out what could be the root cause of this issue so when you execute this uh, migration command you will already be seeing a migration that is already created over here okay so if you just open this migration.sql file we just need to paste in a particular command over here okay so saying sql underscore require underscore primary key and set that to off okay so by adding this uh, piece of code uh, if i just try to run this uh, particular file again uh, sorry the command and uh, let's give this another name so it says we need to reset the mysql database uh, so all of your data will be lost so we are okay with it so since even though there is nothing inside that so our migration will be applied okay so now we see that uh, our database is now in sync with our schema okay so now if i try to uh, run the development server okay so let's uh, open localhost 3000 and yeah so we see our application but uh, we do not find have any kind of data right so you see uh, properties uh, featured properties properties on demand everything is empty so if you also go to the properties page we should not be able to see anything okay so we do not have anything so currently our database is empty so we can leverage the particular file that we created that is to seed sample data to our database so by this help of this uh, particular file called seeder uh, it's somewhere in this utils i guess uh, uh, maybe in this data folder or db okay yeah, it's in db so we have this file which will import sample data okay so we have created already a script for that to import the data so let's run npm run data colon import okay so let's wait so our data is now imported successfully so if you now go back and give this a refresh so we see all the data okay so the only distinction over here is this this database is being hosted on avian or uh, even okay so uh, it has all been coming from there and not no more from our local database okay so that's great we have tackled the first challenge when it comes to deployment so all we now need to do is go to uh, Vercel and create an account over there and uh, you know uh, just deploy this application over there okay so first step we need, need to uh, push our latest changes to github so let's run git add all and git commit and give us a message say uh, staged for deployment okay so let's push this finally okay so our latest code is now pushed so now let's uh, go to Vercel and uh, pull the code over there let's go to vercel.com and uh, make sure you log in so, okay so if you're uh, new to Vercel and creating an account first time you will not see any of these projects so these are all the projects that i created previously so let's click on add new and click on project okay and uh, here it will give you a list of all your repository from your github and uh, if they ask you a question like uh, we just need to aut authenticate Vercel uh, through github then you can uh, give it all the permissions and uh, once we uh, do that so Vercel will have access to your GitHub repositories and it will list them all here, okay? So we can click on import whichever the repository we want to deploy and uh, let's give this a project name and uh, set the root directory to leave it as it is. So then we need to uh, configure our build and output settings, okay? So everything is by default, uh, which is a command to uh, build our application that is npm run build and the output directory if we have anything then we can customize this and now we just need to add in our environment variables okay so remember we have created several environment variables uh, that are uh, required for application to run that is a uh, 
Google Maps API key, uh, Google Auth uh, client API keys and all of that, okay, and including the database uh, URL that we just uh, created, okay, the connection string for MySQL for at uh, Haven, and we can just uh, configure our environment variables by uh, adding them. So once you have added your environment variables, you can simply click, click on deploy, okay. So this is going to uh, execute the deployment step. So it is giving me an error here saying fail to collect page data for the next auth configuration. So we need to add another environment variable within our .env file that is next auth underscore secret. Okay. So you can just set that to any value. So that will be uh, picked up by uh, next auth, auth and then uh, set it up. Okay. So we can just go to our uh, project settings. So we can go right here and go to settings and click on uh, environment variables and over here we have set up few environment variables right so we can just go ahead and uh, add another uh, which is actually required for production okay so that is next auth underscore secret okay which I have already added so uh, make sure that is added so by this uh, this should solve the issue so once you do that we can go to deployments and uh, we can go to any any one of these and click on redeploy okay so click on redeploy and uh, we just need to now wait for it so our build has failed again uh, we just need to configure our build process a little bit uh, differently okay so let's go back to the settings and uh, inside settings uh, where we have for the build command right so here we just need to override instead of just saying next build we also need to generate the prisma uh, file right so by using the uh, prisma cli so let's uh, use npx prisma generate okay okay so this is going to generate prisma for our client okay and let's put a double ampersand to uh, run two commands like this and once i click save uh, let's go ahead and redeploy so click on redeploy and let's see if this time it passes so it is now finally succeeded and our application is being deployed successfully congratulations so now we can click on visit and let's see there we go so this is the url where uh, which is publicly hosted uh, using Vercel, and uh, we can share this with anyone we want and uh, impress them by our project okay so this is all about this uh, deployment process okay so i hope you have understood how to deploy an xjs app to Vercel. okay so by the way Vercel itself is a company which uh, is owning xjs okay so uh, it's definitely worth deploying on Vercel. you can also use any other platforms like uh, netlify or render.com so i just want to customize this url uh, to my own uh, url okay so this is kind of some gibberish with some id and uh, our versal uh, user id and all that so we can just uh, change the domain name of uh, our choice so we can just go uh, right below you where you see this assigning custom domains so we can just uh, click on this and yeah still the same okay so if we find any other uh, custom domain which is already taken so it will just add in some id maybe to just to make it unique and uh, yeah so this is the final url where uh, we can just uh, you know looks much better and also if you if you want you can also customize from this particular panel and uh, yeah that's it so let us check if everything is working as expected so let us search for a property first and uh, let's click on search so we get one property or properties in white field okay so whatever the location you type in so once you deploy this you might uh, find it a little slow okay because uh, during development process it was fast since it was working locally on your machine and this is uh, com uh, hosted in some other area which we are not allowed to choose where we want to deploy this okay so if you want to do that uh, we just need to uh, buy the Vercel hosting which is actually a little bit expensive and uh, yeah so it is okay for you know just for learning purposes and let's uh, click on login and let's see if we are able to log in and uh, yeah so this is one problem that uh, since now our uh, domain name is changed and before it was localhost and that is what we configured uh, within google cloud uh, to give access to next authentication for our web particular website right so that is uh, on localhost so we also need to register this particular url okay that we actually deployed to google cloud console and uh, give permissions for this app so we can go to google cloud and uh, select your particular project okay and uh, here we just need to edit this particular uh, client id settings okay so here we have just given localhost 3000 we can just now go ahead and add in this 
particular url okay so let's add in here and also the same for redirect uris and let's append slash auth slash google and call back okay and let's do the same here as well okay so that's done and let's click on save so we have now given permissions for this particular uh, domain name to access our uh, google cloud console to make next authentication so basically the google auth and uh, now let's try if it is working yeah so it is now working so we can just try to log in and just see if it works so that works all right so perfect so now let's uh, click on browse properties and let's see if we get all the properties there we go so let's try to filter so i want all properties for rent and uh, click on apply so this might take a little time since this is a free service and obviously uh, so that is prone to it and we get all the properties for rent and let's check for properties that have an apartment type okay so maybe i should have even added a loader for this maybe uh, so we get all those properties for apartment and let's check for uh, 3 bhk okay so our filters are all working okay so we can check even for the price and area but i am sure that it might work and let's check the sorting so from low to high and high to low so we can save a property by clicking on the start icon so of course it takes some time so property saved so everything seems to work perfectly fine so congratulations if you have come up to this point where we have finally deployed our application and uh, i hope you got to know uh, much all the features that are used in nextjs okay although we encountered some bugs in nextjs but uh, still that development process keeps on happening and uh, definitely there will be a solution and uh, we might uh, you know go ahead with nextjs 15 and so which has already been released uh, since that the time which i'm recording this video so there are some major changes related to caching and all that which uh, people uh, found a problem in nextjs 14 and earlier versions all of them are now being fixed and now we can uh, you know start using nextjs 15 as well and also it has uh, come to a stable state so one final step that is uh, pending is by adding the uh, the robots.txt and the sitemap okay which is uh, essential for uh, seo okay so which we actually needed the url of the website and uh, if we go to the extension which i told about that is seo meta in one click you see that we do not have any uh, robots.txt uh, file which means says that uh, there is no robot tag defined and also the same for the sitemap okay so let's uh, do all of that in the next video